welcome to this service. My name is John Hellyer and I'm the superintendent of the Gloucestershire Methodist Circuit. On the first Sunday of the year, Methodists normally gather together in a big public act of worship to renew their commitment to God. That's not possible for most of us this year, but in this service we're going to reflect on that covenant prayer which is at the very heart of this service of renewed commitment. First of all, we're going to hear from the prophet Jeremiah about the new kind of relationship that God longs to establish with his people. And then we'll hear the hymn, O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel in those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and will remember their sins no more.
let us pray together. Glory to the Father, the God of love, who created us, who continually preserves and sustains us, who has loved us with an everlasting love and given us the light of the knowledge of his glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God forever. Glory to Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who, though he was rich, yet for our sakes became poor and was tested in every way as we are, yet without sin, who proclaimed the good news of the kingdom and was obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross, who was raised from the dead and is alive forever and has opened the kingdom of heaven to all who trust in him, who is seated at God's right hand in glory and will come to be our judge. Blessed be God for ever. Glory to the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, by whom we're born into the family of God and made members of the body of Christ, whose witness confirms us, whose wisdom teaches us, whose power enables us, who will do for us more than we can ask or think, Blessed be God for ever. To the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be praise and glory for ever. Amen. Gracious God, on this day I and many others seek to renew our covenant with you. Your love is strong and faithful. You never stop loving us. Our love for you is weak and fickle and we often fall short of what we have committed ourselves to be and do. Forgive us our reluctance to follow Christ, our half-hearted worship, our failures in caring, service and witness, and our unwillingness to challenge injustice. Have mercy on us, O God, and renew in us both the desire and the ability to be a people of love. Thank you for your gracious words. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. In the Lord I'll be ever thankful. In the Lord I will rejoice. Look to God, do not be afraid. Lift up your voice, says the Lord is here. Lift up your voice, says the Lord.
now from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 15, and the first nine verses. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown in the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. The image of the vine is about togetherness. That's one of the reasons why the passage is apt for the covenant service. Jesus is talking about the role of the vine grower, who tends the vine with purpose to make it produce as much fruit as possible. That includes the skill of careful pruning. Jesus likens this to the work of the Father. Jesus then uses the image of the interconnectedness of the vine that bears fruit to describe our relationship to him. If we're to be fruitful, we have to stay connected to Jesus because it's through staying together with Jesus that we grow. We're given a sense of the Father working in the Son and both working together in the lives of disciples. It's important to notice that Jesus is not talking to individuals, but to the community of disciples. It's in being together that the Christian community is fruitful. As he develops the theme, Jesus shifts the focus from the vine to the idea of abiding. Fruitfulness comes from living in and staying in a committed relationship with God and with each other that's based on love. In the covenant prayer that Methodists use every year, we're reminded of the fundamentals of our togetherness as Christians. God, through Christ, takes the initiative and invites us into a living relationship in which we're offered life, liberation and love. We respond by recentering our lives on Jesus. That's a personal commitment, but also something we support each other in doing together. We're going to make the commitment for ourselves today, aware that others will be doing the same. And we look forward to the time when we can be together in one place to renew this covenant relationship. Today, we choose again to trust God, to walk with Jesus and to live in the ways of the kingdom. One way of putting this into practice is found in the Methodist way of life. This is a set of commitments and practices that encourage us and equip us to live a Christian life better. Before you say the covenant prayer, perhaps read through the commitments and reflect on which of these you want to grow in during the coming year. We're going to hear the commitments of the Methodist way of life read for us and then we'll hear the covenant prayer. As far as we are able with God's help, in worship we will pray daily. We will worship with others regularly. We will look and listen for God in scripture and the world. In learning and caring, we will care for ourselves and those around us. We will learn more about our faith. We will practice hospitality and generosity. In service, we will help people in our communities and beyond. We will care for creation and all God's gifts. We will challenge injustice. In evangelism, we will speak of the love of God. We will live in a way that draws others to Jesus. We will share our faith with others. 
in the hymn, Breathe On Me, Breath of God, we recognise that it is only with the help of God's Holy Spirit at work within us that we can ever keep the promises that we make to God. He promises to be our help. So we make a moment to be still, to focus our attention on God, who promises to come to our help. And I'd invite you to say the words of the covenant prayer along with me, if you wish. I am no longer my own, but yours. Your will, not mine, be done in all things wherever you may place me, in all that I do and in all that I may endure, where there is work for me and where there is none. When I am troubled and when I am at peace, your will be done when I am valued and when I am disregarded, when I find fulfilment and when it is lacking, when I have all things and when I have nothing. I willingly offer all I have and am to serve you as and where you choose. Glorious and blessed God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you are mine and I am yours. May it be so forever. Let this covenant now made on earth be fulfilled in heaven. Amen.
Remembering that God's love and care is for all that he has created, we're now going to turn to God with prayers of concern and thanksgiving. Let's pray. Take a moment to remember the times when you felt close to God and think of the people who've shown God's goodness to you. Give thanks to God for them. Pray for your church, that it may be faithful in its witness to God's love. Pray for the church worldwide, that in word and action, it may help people to see God's glory. Pray for the leaders of the nations that they may act justly and guide wisely. Pray for those pushed to the margins of society, that their voice may be heard and that they and their gifts may be welcome. and pray for people you know who are in particular need. And we sum up our prayers by saying the Lord's Prayer. I'd invite you to say it with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And so we conclude our worship with a hymn that reminds us of everything that we owe to God made known in Jesus Christ. All I once held dear.
Thank you for joining in this act of worship. There'll be another service available on this website from the Gloucestershire Methodist Circuit next week. A prayer of blessing. May the God of heaven and earth bless us and keep us. May his face shine upon us that we may know God's peace and live in ways that reflect his love now and always. Amen.